Hey there YouTube, I'm Ikitsu, this is the Ikitsu Times, welcome to my channel, welcome back to Battlefleet Gothic. So we're going to be talking today a little bit about what makes it so that you lose. This is a difficult game for new players, not just because it's got very little to teach you how to actually play against other players, but also because it's not necessarily that clear as to why ships are dealing a lot of damage to you and why you're not dealing very much damage to them. So. We're going to be going over each of the fleets and telling you a little bit about what it is that makes it so that they're probably dealing a lot of damage to you and why you might not be dealing very much damage at all to them. So we're going to start off with the Imperial Navy, the bog standard guys here. So they're excellent at macro broadsides and that is going to be the typical thing that people know about them. But the starting ship that you're going to have and the starting ship that you're likely going to face off against is the Dauntless. And the Dauntless is a little bit of an exception to that general rule here. If we were to look at the broadside characteristic of this Dauntless over here, and go into the stats screen for that, we can see that this light macro battery on this side here has a number of attacks 6, damage 6, and reload time of 9 seconds. This equates to 4 damage per second. Now, that seems like it's higher than the Heavy Prowl Lance, which has a damage per second of 3 and that would generally be the case. Now, the general problem with this, though, is that almost every vehicle in the game has a 50% armor rate. There are, there's typically higher, uh, but there are very few cases where it is lower. So what this results in is the li uh, light macro batteries, four damage per second, being reduced by 50%. That's what 50 armor does. Rather, it actually blocks half of the hits that the armor takes. But still, this means that the average damage changes from four damage to second, uh, per second to two damage per second from the light macro batteries. By contrast, the front firing light uh, or heavy prowl lance deals a pretty decent 2.25 damage per second, which is a little bit higher than the broadside. So if you're in the earlier tiers and you find that you're actually losing against an opponent who has got themselves positioned so that the front is facing your broadside, you're going to sort of realize that that is probably why they're dealing a little bit more damage than you. Now the other thing to note is that the front armor of this is a little bit heavier, and this is true for all classes of Imperial Navy ships pretty much. You can see here that this Overlord has 75 armor to the front, 50 to the sides, or sorry, the uh, Dominator there, the Overlord also, and the Retribution as well has 75 armor to the front and 50 to the sides. That's just the way that the Imperial Navy ships work. But what does that actually mean? Well, this means that they have a 75% chance to deflect a shot that hits them in the front, so long as it is not an armor-piercing weapon. So this means that if I'm firing my broadside of these light macro batteries into the front of this Imperial ship, I'm not going to be dealing as much damage. I'm only going to be dealing one point of damage per second. That's halved from the two points of damage per second that I would be dealing if I was going broadside to broadside. So. This changes it even more in favor of the front firing arc of the Dauntless. This means that if I'm approaching my opponent, I'm dealing more damage with the Dauntless if I'm uh, going at them face to face. But it also means that if they're trying to fling macro battery fire into the front of this Dauntless ship here, it's not going to be causing very much damage at all. It's going to essentially be having the amount that I'm taking. So if you find yourself not dealing much damage to a Nautilus class ship in the early game, it could also be because you're firing into that very heavy 75 armor. Now the solution to this obviously is to try and maneuver such that you're firing at the broadsides there. And this could potentially mean that you're going broadside to broadside, but at the very least what you could do if you've got a similar class of ship is to try and go front to front. Now, of course, if you're playing as something like Chaos, perhaps, that's not really so much of a necessary concern because it doesn't matter which direction you're facing all that much. But in any event, what you're trying to do is sort of minimize the amount of damage that the Imperial player can do and maximize the amount that you can do by not firing into that dense front armor there. Now, there are certain weapons that can bypass this and certain playstyles that can ignore this, but that is, in the general sense, what is probably happening if you find yourself not dealing much damage to Imperial Navy ships. Getting around to their side is going to be also kind of dangerous though because they have got decent weapons on the side, even if the front weapon is a little bit better. And as you get to other classes of ships, like say this Dominator here, uh, that's not necessarily going to be true. You have to sort of weigh the trade-off of the 75% armor from the front as compared to the massive bristling damaging broadsides that they have on the sides here. So there is definitely a sort of trade-off that you have to make once you get into the higher tiers of ships. So if you find yourself not dealing much damage and you feel like you want to deal more damage and risk doing something uh, a little bit risky, maneuver over to the flank of this type of ship, you'll be able to deal more damage to it. 
but at the same time, if you find you're taking too much damage and you cannot withstand that kind of uh, damage, you're going to want to get around to the front of these ships. The next thing that you might be losing to when you're playing against the Imperial Navy is their strong shield upgrades. The Imperial Navy have amazingly good shield upgrades, the second best in the game or possibly even the best. And because of this, it's very, very common for people to stack shield upgrades on their Imperial Navy ships. We can look at the cruiser tier ships here. Um, you can see that they have 300 shields. This is, means that they've got a 200 base shield because I've upgraded it. Um, additional void shield generator mixed with the Voss pattern void shield um, and mixed with the uh, auxiliary shield capacitors means that this ship is going to be extremely difficult to uh, take down the shields of if you were to compare it to a typical shield, uh, typical shielded vessel. Um, because of this, it's actually going to be very unlikely that you'll crack through the shields and deal very much hull damage before the shields come back up. And because they've got such good access to special abilities here because of the um, uh, Adaptus Mechanicus uh, favor, they can actually also have things like shield uh, transfer and they can also have void shield overcharge on a lot of their ships, giving them a really strong ability to withstand opponents that are trying to focus down these ships. So if you're finding that you're having a really hard time cracking an opponent's ship, it could be that they've got more upgrades than you in that line. And you're just going to have to sort of either equip more of your sort of um, shield ignoring weapons or you're going to have to sort of uh, figure out some other way to deal damage to these guys. The weapons that ignore shields in this game are ordnance such as torpedoes and bombers as well as boarding actions and ramming. So those are the different tools that can effectively go through the very very strong shields that the Imperial Navy has. It's not always practical to try and rely on those specific things but that could be one of the things that lets you sort of deal damage to these extremely tanky ships. The next thing that you want to sort of uh, look out for, of course, is that uh, they're often going to be upgraded with armor-piercing macro weapons. Uh, armor-piercing ammunition is a upgrade that is not common for very many fleets, but is available to the Imperial Navy, making them one of the better um, macro cannon using uh, factions there. Now, what this does is it changes these weapons so that anytime they hit a vehicle from close range, uh, they reduce the armor value of that vehicle by 25. So this means if I'm going broadside to broadside with my Dominator against your unupgraded Dominator, um, I treat your armor as though it were 25, changing my damage per second for, for a single set of four macro batteries from six damage per second. Um, it uh, would be dropped down to three under normal circumstances for that 50-50. Um, this would change it to uh, 4.5, if I recall correctly, uh, which is a pretty big increase in damage if you think about it. So uh, you're typically going to find that that sort of combination of abilities is on the Imperial Navy ships and they're going to be dealing a lot of damage because of this. So even if you're at extremely low levels and you're at, with the Dauntless here, um, this can mean quite a bit. It changes these from 4 damage per second reduced down to 2 damage per second to changing it from uh, to 4 damage down to 3 damage per second. And since they've got the additional turrets on top here, you could be facing 6 damage per second from a broadside from the Dauntless, which is quite a lot of damage. Now, this does mean that if you're going front to broadside, it's reducing it from 75 to 50, which means that they're still dealing 4 damage per second. This is actually pretty comparable to the front damage from a Dauntless, so if you're going side to side against a Dauntless or front to side against a Dauntless and still losing, it could just be that they have that armor-piercing macro attack and you don't. So. It's difficult to say uh, how to best counter that, but it could be better in those situations to maybe maneuver uh, to the front of the ship. But what is definitely going to be true is you typically don't want to be going so that you're uh, taking both broadsides simultaneously. All right. Uh, one of the things you don't have to worry about when you're facing off against the Imperial Navy is often the favors. Um, while the favors for the Imperial Navy are strong, they provide small passive bonuses in large numbers, and those small passive bonuses sort of stack together to make the ships a little bit better at what they already do, but they're not going to make these ships into something that you would not be able to deal with uh, in the usual way. Uh, for example, if you're fighting these guys and you're sort of dealing with uh, damage to them by kiting, none of the favors really truly negate kiting in any relevant sense. Um, and if you're dealing damage to them by sort of boarding and ramming, you're playing orcs, getting in close, none of them really stop you from using that strategy. The Space Marines come close to stopping you from doing that strategy, but realistically you're probably still going to do that against the Space Marine uh, Imperial Navy fleet anyway, and so on and so forth. So they will be stronger, they will be more powerful with those favors, but none of those favors are going to cause confusing deaths that you don't really understand. So anyway, uh, let's go ahead and try and get into a battle and demonstrate some of these points. 
All right, so here we are. We're playing actually against bots because I figured this is an easier way to properly demonstrate everything that I'm talking about here. We'll also be using the advanced cogitators uh, a little bit in this battle, which I would not normally do in a internet match. But in any event, let's go ahead and deploy some of our ships here. Let's go ahead and drop down this guy here, this guy here, and our Widowmaker here. Now we are against Space Marines in this particular case, but regardless, against almost anybody we're going to go ahead and set this to frontal firing behavior and boarding range. This little ship here doesn't really matter that much but it does have a front firing weapon so we will put that in front firing and we're going to start automating things. So this is just something that's handy that you can do that makes the aim much more uh, reliable and easier to play. So our opponent here has got three ships for us to destroy. I can only see two on the map right now so one of them is probably in the gas cloud. That's fine does mean that they are probably using, again, uh, I, can they afford two and then an escort, or are they using one and an escort? Uh, I think they're using two and an escort, so Understood. they're using a similar fleet composition to our own, but um, we are going yes, to be able to make good use of this uh, heavy prow lance that is going to be able to shred through that heavy armor that they've got there. Now, positioning doesn't matter tremendously against the Space Marines because, of course, they're capable of dealing uh, the same amount of damage from the front, from the sides, basically. Very, very similar damage per seconds from those arcs. And, of course, they're also uh, just as tough from every single angle, so you're not going to be able to At deal very command. much damage to them either. Um, looks like my Orders opponent just received. had one ship in stealth mode, silent running for no good reason. That is the AI for you. Course plotted. So... Uh, what we want to do is just get to the edge of this here so that we can Understood. get some good spotting with our fire, uh, um, our destroyer, Widowmaker. Engines hot. The thing is the firestorm for some reason. Uh, we'll turn this way and fire a torpedo off just for the hell of it. Understood. But it really doesn't matter that much. Yes, Admiral. All right, so we're going to we go up and start Imperial firing at this Navy. ship here. Actually, I'm, I'm against Space Marines. I don't necessarily want to be at uh, the closer range value. Alright, so, Ship ready. let's see what we've got here. Changing course. That is one of their escorts. Frigate. Your orders. So it's going in a bit of a burn to try and get closer to us uh, a little bit faster. And of course this does let it Ship identify ready. us a little bit faster. Setting but course. I'm not too concerned about that. Let's not board this guy. Your orders. Helm coordinates acknowledged. Orders received. Awaiting orders. Right, let's just ram this guy, I think. Understood. Yes, Admiral. Engines to maximum. Oh, we're gonna want to get out of there anyway. Don't think that our second one is going to be quite fast sighted. enough to get out of that in time. Oh yeah, well, just barely. Cruising speed set. Underway. All right, so again, we're trying to face for the most part our opponent with our front armor and front weapons, but unfortunately, they've sort of gotten around behind us here. So we're going to start uh, swinging our ships around to face their cruiser. This is going to be the one that we're going to want to fight here. Setting this does let us do sort of a broadside and then get to the front weapons, which is fine. And we could also sort of target the specific system here. At your command. Here you can see that their assault boats are coming out to say hi to us, essentially. But we're able to deal damage from both our broadside and our front weapons here, so this is perfectly fine in this case. Positioning here, and that does get rid of that for us. At your command. Initiate emergency repairs. Alright, and uh, let's set these guys that they will be warning emergency actions. Repairs. Changing course. Underway. Very hard to get good boarding actions against Space Marines, but uh, managed to destroy their ship regardless. Ooh. Wow, and they got a really good... <laughs> Got the really good explosion there. So um, I didn't end up using the advanced cautious chairs because I didn't feel like we needed it. But you can see that we basically just kept our strong facing against the enemy ships the entire time. Uh, when a new threat came, I swung the ships around so that they were using that stronger facing against those ships as well. And this means that I was able to deal full damage against my opponent's ships the entire time uh, while they were doing far, far less to me. Uh, they were busy maneuvering and flying around in circles and keeping their speed up. That's not too important. What's important is they could have just kept straight forward against me and potentially dealt a little bit more damage. 
it wouldn't have gone well for them simply because the space marines actually are pretty bad at that kind of fight but um it would have gone better for them than if they were tr kept trying to face their broadside at us and trying to spin around and, and do all that sort of nonsense although i think this is the carrier model so maybe it didn't actually have a good front weapon um normally i'd prefer the bombard cannon variant but uh in any event that is a brief summary on the basics of why you might be losing against the Imperial Navy. They might simply have that sort of stronger armor against you, they might simply have that superior type of weapon facing against you, and uh, you might be receiving a lot more damage than you're able to dish out against them, especially in the earlier levels with Dauntless where it's a little bit less clear and where it's a little bit less obvious that you don't want to be facing the front of the ship. So anyway, I hope you found this episode enjoyable, and of course, as always, I hope to see you guys all next time.